So I got my DR25 and I'm, it's looking like it's working. It's still a big pain in the ass, but it's, it's gonna fit. So what I'm having to do is you see this uh, blue wire, I'm kind of using it as a tracer. So I got through what I could and it was still a pain in the dick. Just take it from me, make sure you have your DR25 on the main part of your harness so you can work it forward and I have to try to get all of this through that. What I have to do is get it through the main harness. I thought it was gonna fit because I measured the main harness. I mean, all right, it's about half inch, maybe a little bit bigger. I'll order three quarter inch DR25. It shrinks down to half the size, perfect. But then once you start putting DR25 over this, you have a couple places to get thicker and then it just doesn't fit. So I had to order the one inch. So I'm using the blue one as a tracer. I'm taping the wires that are behind it onto it and pulling it through. I only have one left and it should be good. I, I messed up some of the DR25 in the process. It started slipping, moving along the wires. So once I get this onto the main harness, I'll have to um, dress up all the uh, DR25 again. Not too big of a deal, I hope. So uh, let me finish this one wire and uh, hopefully finish up this harness this episode. Sweet, I was somehow able to manage to fit that one inch over everything. Put the dual wall heat shrink right where, where I needed it. Now I'm laying it in place. Now I can go ahead and I'm double checking my lengths, make sure nothing funky happened. And once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start stripping and cripping on each connector. And then the harness will be where it goes. So it's uh, really exciting to make it this far. It's been a, a lot of learning, <laughs> a lot of headaches learning. If I had to do this all over again, I would. I learned so much by it and I'm still not done. So it's all, you know, it's very rewarding. I got a lot of friends that are building cars right now at the same time. And uh, most of them paid to have harnesses done, have someone wire the car, have someone do the fuel system. And I mean, if they ever have a problem, I know I'll be able to help them, but it's, uh, you know, it feels good to be able to do it yourself. So if anyone has any questions on anything I've gone through or maybe something I didn't cover in detail enough, let me know, you know, I'll answer any questions I have on, you know, I can now say firsthand experience, not something I've heard or seen, you know, I've actually done it. So hopefully I can, um, I don't know if I'll be able to pin everything tonight, but uh, it's kind of the goal. Got, got nothing else planned, so chugging away. All right, got the harness laid out, ready to start stripping and pinning. Need to double check that I have all of my uh, plugs because they've been sitting around for so long. Might, might have lost some. So easiest way to do that, don't mind that, is... Uh, and just run through here and make sure I have everything on the uh, so I have my crank pickup, cam pickup, IAT I have, map I have, TPS I have, engine coolant temp I have, uh, let's see, injectors, I have six injectors, I have six coils, boost, I'm making my own plug, auto motor, I don't have that, I guess that's everything, it's weird, I have an, I have an empty bag but, I mean, everything checks off, so time to just start pinning and uh, send it. I started stripping the uh, harness to uh, start pinning, and I have almost forgot the best part, the uh, master label kit. It's kind of uh, some that I think is the uh, icing on the cake. Nice, nice little touch to put at the end. I think it's something you usually only see on a harness of uh, higher quality. So I think it's nice to take the extra step, add little touches, make it look good. So uh, hopefully it does. We'll, uh, we'll see, it's looking all right so far. All right, lesson number one. Hopefully the uh, fan isn't overbearing. See the uh, blue weather, I forget what it's called. That's on backwards. It needs to go on the other way. So learn from my mistake. All right, don't be like me. Don't get so excited that you make the same mistake twice. I pinned the next one and I had it on backwards. <laughs> Alright, middle one is going to be correct. Got Alright, third time's a charm. You can see the difference. So you see the left one has a nice crimp around the uh, weather seal and the other ones are just kind of going to 
lay there. There's no way to fix it besides cutting it short. I don't feel like doing that. So, lesson learned, chugging on. Lesson number two to learn from my mistake. Don't get so excited. They put the wrong engine label on the wrong injector. Obviously this isn't number six, because that's number one. That says number six. So that's gonna be my little uh, Easter egg on the engine. This one doesn't even reach to number six, so it doesn't matter, I can't mix it up. But um, yeah, don't, don't do that. Tip number three that I was having trouble with. So when you're putting these weather seals on, do it before you strip the wires. I don't know, I was being retarded, I was stripping the wires, and I'm like, alright, time for the weather seal, and you're fighting the wires to go through it, so tip number three. Alright, sorry if this uh, looks weird, I'm trying a different uh, ratio on the camera. I didn't like how zoomed in it was looking, so, alright, tip number four. Doing, uh, doing alright, still making some mistakes. Uh, one thing I'm noticing now, so pressure sensors. So I have this fuel pressure one and I have kind of a similar one for the oil pressure. So these sensors are going to be pull to seat. So what you do is you put everything on, you put the uh, weather stripping, then you actually take the sensor, it's, oh, not the sensor, but the plug itself. You put the plug through the wires, then you pin it, and then when you pull the wires kind of through it, then they click into position. So you would have to push them back out if you needed to service them. You don't you don't pull them out of the back. So something to uh, pay attention to. Three thirty in the morning. I just couldn't stop. I just kind of got on a roll. You get into rhythm. Wanted to get as much done as I could. You can tell how tired I am in my voice. But uh, look at it. Look. I think the uh, that the uh, engine label kit makes the harness. If it was just black, you know, blending in, it doesn't. But when you see the yellow, you're like, that's a custom harness. Someone put some time into that, or they bought it. But looking looking good. I like the way I routed it. The um, only issue I'm finding right now is that uh, my coils, some a couple of them are a little tight. As in, I, I wasn't sure if the uh, wiring was going to make it. A couple of them just barely do make it. So, it's coming along awesome though. Looks looks badass. I like it. I think, I think we're on track to start it this weekend. So, wiring is looking good. Back here the next morning. I ended up staying up till like 4 in the morning. Just trying to bang out all these connectors that I could. You can see all the yellow. Got the uh, engine label kit going on. Like I said, it really stands out. Looks really good. Gives it a nice professional look. Um, next tip that I found out the hard way. So I'm using my intercooler as a little table. But um, you want to pay attention to what pins are going into which connector. I, I'm not sure which one uses what. They come in a, you know, they come in little bags usually. So a bag with the um, weather sealant and the connector. So each one has its own. So there's been two kinds that I've been using lately. And I didn't realize it until like, so I, it comes with extras. It comes with an extra pin. And uh, so the extra ones were just building up here and then I grabbed one and went to go put it in. It wouldn't, and it wouldn't seal into the uh, plug. Like it wouldn't click in and then come to find out, I'm starting to get different uh, pins with it. So it's something to look out for. Uh, another thing, I haven't shown you guys exactly how I'm doing the crimping. I'll uh, do a little more in-depth right now. I'll show you guys each step on it. So right now we're going to go for TPS. So I know I got my TPS right here. So, we're never gonna, so we know we're going to do that one. So first thing I'm going to do is I found my uh, engine label kit. Got my TPS one. So first thing I do is I need to cut the, uh, the clear shrink tube that goes on top of this. So hold on. All right, so you got both of your uh, heat shrink tubings. So first you're gonna slide on the clear one, then the actual label one. Hold on, I can't do this one-handed. All right, I hope the fan isn't messing this up too much. All right, so we got the TPS on. 
boom, get the wire. Next thing we want to do is we want to put the uh, weather sealant on each wire because it's easier to slide it on before you strip it. All right, weather stripping, check. Now time to strip the wire. Stripped, and now to crimp. So I'll show you my crimpers real quick. So uh, you can see it, the uh, number one, number five are round. That's for the uh, weather sealing. And then two, three, and four for the crimps. I've been using number two, the smallest one, on every crimp and it's been working awesome. Let me uh, crimp these and I'll show you how it looks. All right, so I got this first one crimped. Right in the middle, curves around on both sides, meets in the middle, little V. Nice connection, do a little pull test. Does it move? Awesome. Next step is uh, crimp the weather sealer. That's it. It's doing that for every wire and then finding your pin out, making sure you plug them in in the correct spot. And then, oh, and then once I'm done with that and I get the plug on, then I go ahead and do the uh, label. I slide it up. I don't, I don't go all the way up because the wires do need to uh, spread when they come out of the uh, plug, and you don't want to have you don't want the label to put tension on the wires. They need some room to expand coming out of the plug, and then back to the DR25. So hit that with the heat gun, and that's it. Just every single sensor. That's it. I feel like my back is broken. Let me take a little break from uh, still pinning. I'm gonna do the last coil and I'm not gonna front not gonna lie you know a lot of the coils are pretty tight the wires are barely long enough so it's that's one thing I've learned I definitely would have left more room in the end and then just trimmed it down I thought I was good but obviously you know once I put the DR25 and routed it or whatever the case may be I lost some length so I would have kept it long all the way up until I was about to pin it because right now I'm kind of regretting it uh, it'll work, you know, probably have some strain on the wires, but it'll it'll get me by. But I know for next time it'll definitely be ten times better. Like I've learned so much from it. Uh, let me show you guys one other thing. So, different, or pins. So, let's see. So, let's say my number six coil. That flips around. So, it comes out of the harness this way and it flips back plug in. So one thing you want to look for when you're pinning the uh, the plugs is how they're orient or how they're going to be oriented when they go into the plug. So see on this one, so see that little hole on the bottom of it? That little hole, let me see if we can pick it up here. It's going to be on the other side. Uh, let me get a pick. Hold on. See if I can do this one-handed. All right, so we have our plug. See if I can, where are we at, where are we at? All right, so we have our plug, and then right in here, this little tab, down in the middle of each one. That's what that little hole sits into. So if you look at it like this, it's hard to tell on on this side. Let's see if you can tell from the other side with the light. All right, one second. Let me try to get this to focus. All right, this this is a better view right here. So you can see those three little prongs in the middle of each plug. So on here you can tell they're on the bottom, whereas some of them they might be on the top side. So you want to pay attention to how you crimp the pin on the wire depending on how or depending on the position of how it's kept inside of the plug. That way you're not having to twist the wires around to get the pin to match up with its lock in the plug, if I'm making sense. It's just those little details you look forward to keep the wiring a little bit cleaner and easier to work with. All right, I'm 99% done crimping on plugs. So 
everything around the uh, intake manifold came out awesome. Like I said earlier, a few of them kind of tight. Coils were the worst of it. I have, so you can see number one here is pretty straight. Two's all right. Three has a little kink in it. Four is good. Five has a weird turn in it, and one came out pretty good. But it's still overall pretty tight. You know, I'm not, I'm not crazy about it. Uh, I just noticed I need to do the uh, cam pickup. But overall, I'm happy. I mean, I could have done a better job, but first time doing it, can't can't really complain. So just lesson learned, leave extra wiring. And I was kind of hoping to start it soon, but I was, I was having trouble with my uh, TPS sensor. Well, not with the sensor, the actual plug. So I could have get my signal wire to push into the plug and clip in. It just wouldn't, wouldn't push in. I don't know what the deal was. Uh, I don't know if I got a bad plug or maybe the pin was incorrect. So I just ordered a new one. Not going to keep messing with it because... Every time I crimp a new pin on it, I keep losing length on the wire, and I only have so much wire to work with. So that kind of, it's kind of holding me back. So I think that's pretty much it for now. That's all I got going, but looking good so far. I'll do some shots of uh, what I got going on so far. What is it, John? YouTube, comment, like this video if you like it. Watch some more if you don't like it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>